Oh, hello, I'm playing with toys today. Why am I playing with toys in a Lightroom bite-sized video? I hear you ask. Well, these toys are gonna to help me to show you how to correct the white balance inside of Lightroom. Now, before I start, I want you to promise me that you will always shoot in RAW from this day forward, if you're not already doing so. Because it's far easier to edit a photograph and certainly far easier to fix the white balance with a RAW shot than what it is for JPEG. And I'm gonna show you that. Right, before I start, should we, um, should we watch some titles? I feel we need to. On your camera, you can select various different white balance settings to correspond with the location that you're actually shooting in. Now, my suggestion is always to use auto white balance and obviously to always shoot in RAW. Now you can see the color shift being applied when I change the settings, and that will match the degrees Kelvin of whatever location you're in. Now if you shoot in JPEG, it actually bakes in this color shift, whereas a RAW shot doesn't do that, it just records the RAW information, and you can retrospectively change the white balance inside of Lightroom. So here we are then inside of Lightroom, and you can see on the screen, it's a pretty little collection of some of my favorite items that I use when I'm teaching DSLR photography. But this shot is a JPEG and it was shot in the auto white balance setting and the colors, trust me, they've been rendered perfect. That's exact same colors that the actual items are. If I jump across to this next shot, which is a raw shot, it's exactly the same. So again, also white balance was used for both shots. I just add that this was shot under natural daylight conditions, which brings me to this next photograph. Now this is a raw shot. And what I did here was I changed the white balance setting in the camera to incandescent. Now what the cameras tried to do is to balance the um, degrees Kelvin to match the sort of temperature that comes off an incandescent light. Now, of course, I shot it under natural daylight, and that's why it's got this blue cast. However, if I made the mistake of doing that, and I shot in RAW, I can now retrospectively change that white balance, and let me show you how easy that is. If I just jump across to the basic palette and find the white balance section, I've got a drop-down menu just here. And if I drop that menu down, this kind of reflects the settings that you have on your camera. And there's the auto, daylight, cloudy, etc. So remember the first shot was shot in auto white balance and it rendered the colors fantastic, didn't it? So if I now, now click on auto here, bear in mind I've chosen the wrong white balance setting, it will automatically fix the colors. Now watch this, it's like magic. And it's fixed the colors. All I've done is changed the white balance. If I change it back to as shot, Remember that was with the wrong setting in incandescent. It's got that sort of blue color cast. Let's put it back to auto. And what I'm gonna do is jump over to the timeline and click on the previous image, which was the raw photograph mm. with the correct white balance setting, the auto setting. And they are pretty much identical. If you can see a change, it's probably just a shadow of me moving around, but trust me, they're identical. And that's all from an image that was had the incorrect white balance. There it is again with the incandescent and again, just simply changing it to automatic. Next image we're gonna look at then is a JPEG. Now this JPEG image is exactly the same. It was shot under natural daylight, but with the wrong white balance setting, the incandescent setting. And here we have the same blue color cast. Now watch what happens now. If I drop down this menu, I haven't got the same um, choices that I have with a raw shot. The raw shot will let me retrospectively change it to whatever white balance I, I, I choose. With a JPEG, I don't get the same choice. I do get an auto, but when I click on that, unfortunately, it doesn't give me the colors, the right colors. And again, going to the previous shot, we know that's what the colors should be like. But with the JPEG shot with the wrong white balance setting, it I just simply can't fix it. And it, it's I could mess around with the sliders uh, and manually try and get it right, 
but I could be there for hours trying to get that right, was with a raw shot, you could see that it fixed it straight away. Let's go on to the next shot then, which is this raw shot here. Exactly the same shot under natural light, but with the wrong setting, the incandescent setting. Now what I've added to this shot is a color chart that has a neutral gray strip. And what a lot of photographers do is to pop one of these into their, uh, you know, maybe the first shot they take, pop it into the scene, and then they can refer to that when they are trying to get the colors right in the shot. Now you know that I can just simply click on auto and it will fix the image. But I'm gonna put it back to as shot and I'm gonna show you the, the way, uh, another method using the uh, eyedropper tool. So if I click on this and move into the image, now wherever I move the eyedropper tool, it is constantly reading the red, green, and blue values. So wherever I move this round, you'll see that the RGB values in percentages are changing. Now I'm gonna make my way over to this neutral gray strip because that neutral gray color is, is basically 50% red, green, and blue and that will help fix all the colors. Now it works amazingly well. And you can see here that the red is on 44.4, the green is on 53.2, and the 70, uh, sorry, and the blue is on 77.1%. Now we can, we know there's too much blue in the image and that's reflected in those readings because it's at 77.1. Now if I just simply click in this gray area, it will fix the colors. And there you go, perfect. Just by clicking in that gray area. Um, let me set it back to as shot. That was it, uh, you know, with the horrible blue cast on. Pick the eyedropper up, over to the gray area, click on fixed. Let's jump to the JPEG and do the same, exactly the same setup, shot under natural lighting conditions with the incandescent setting. And I'm gonna pick the eyedropper tool up I'm gonna move across to this neutral gray strip, click on it, oh, and it hasn't done it. And again, it's it just hasn't worked. Now, the reason it's not working is because a JPEG will bake in that um, white balance set. So this JPEG had that incandescent white balance kind of break baked in. So although I've clicked on the gray area and it's, it's done its best to try and get the colors back to what they should be, it's nowhere near as good as a raw shot. The raw shot does it brilliantly because it hasn't got that, you know, incorrect white balance baked in. Now let me just show you that in real life then. Here's a, a raw shot that I captured in the Mersey Tunnel in Liverpool. And um, I can see it's got, this image has got like a yellow cast to it. Now to get rid of that, let me just try our faithful old automatic setting. And Voila, it's fixed it. And I could just simply lift the exposure and do before and after. You can see the yellow cast completely removed just by using the, the auto setting. Now I'm just gonna jump back a few steps with this shot, right back to where it was, and um, redo that, but using the eyedropper tool. So I'm looking for something that's neutral gray in, in that shot, and I know that this surround around this fire hydrant was pretty much gray. So again, picking the eyedropper tool up, moving across into the image, clicking in the area that's gray, and that has fixed the white balance too. It just needs a bit of an exposure change, and there you go, a before and after. So you can see that shooting with RAW gives you the ability to quickly you know, correct the white balance either by using the, the, the drop down options that you have or by simply using the eyedropper and finding something that's neutral gray in your image. What happens though, if you haven't got neutral gray in your image? Now this nighttime shot in Liverpool, now it's notoriously difficult for a camera to meet, you know, to sort of measure the degrees Kelvin or the white balance in a shot when there's multiple lights and we've got so many different you know, types of lighting in this shot, the camera has done its best. And I shot this again on, on auto white balance. Now, if I clicked onto auto, it doesn't really do what I wanted to do. It doesn't change it to the colors that I'd like. 
So I'm gonna put it back to as shot. Even clicking on something gray within this image is not really gonna make that much difference. What I need to do is to manually play with these sliders. Now I'm gonna take it more towards the blue because I remember it, it had a nice blue sky. And straight away that looks better, doesn't it? And then I can lift the vibrance up. Let's see what else we can do. Perhaps lift the shadows a little bit. I mean, and that looks great straight away, doesn't it? Uh, over here, it's a bit blown out. So as you know, we can just drop those highlights and bring that back. Now, a result of doing that is perhaps we need to lift the exposure slightly. And there you go. If I do it before and after, it's so much better, isn't it? You know, and of course I would play with that image and, and uh, carry on editing it. But they're, they're the various options then you have with white balance. And I must stress, and I suppose really if you're using Lightroom, you will be shooting in RAW, aren't you? You're shooting in RAW, no, you should be shooting in RAW and not JPEG because obviously a RAW image there's just so much more detail and it's got so much more latitude and the ability to be able to drag those sliders to correct the shot is far, far superior than with a JPEG. But, oh, you're back. Now, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you understand the white balance and how to correct it a bit more than you did before you watched the video because that's the whole point, isn't it? Now, please subscribe, click on the little bell icon to be notified of further uploads. But above all else, thank you so much for watching. I've really enjoyed your company. Although I can't see it, I know you're there in spirit. You take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next upload. Bye for now. Take a photograph and make the moment last step the perfect photo company.